Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everyone back to another video. And today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Now, I've been asked uh, numerous times over the years here on YouTube, uh, Fabio, why don't you review CDs or records or talk about more, talk more about, uh, you know, different bands you like, you know, since you're really into music. And, um, you know, that idea has been bouncing around in my head for a little bit. And I figured I will try to, you know, give this a go. I think I'm going to just do a little test run here on, on this. And if people like it, great, I'll keep doing it. If people don't like it, I won't do it. Um, and this is really kind of the second attempt that I've done something like this. Um, a few years ago, I did a few videos similar to this where I talked about different music topics and it really it really didn't kick off then people really weren't into it and I didn't get a lot of response or feedback from it so I just stopped doing it um, but I now want to kind of retry it you know see if people excuse me are more receptive and open to it and again if you guys like it and I hear, you know, positive feedback and stuff, then I will more than welcome uh, keep doing it. You know, absolutely, I will keep working on these type of videos for you guys. Um, and I want it to kind of start with one of my favorite bands. It's hard to pick a favorite, but Van Halen is really up there for me. And uh, again, I wanted to pick something that really kind of stands out for me as you know one of the the greats in my opinion for music and one of my favorites and something that I would like to share my thoughts about so today this video is just going to be kind of an intro to kick these things off and from here I will review uh, all their albums from the David Lee Roth to Sammy Hagar Gary Sharon the one Gary Sharon album and of course I will review uh, like live albums and best ofs and stuff like that. You know, I will try to tackle, you know, everything that I can. And um, one day, not now, but one day I will show off, like, my vinyls, my CD. You know, I have some CDs here, but um, not all of them. It's just bootlegs that I have here. But um, one day... Whew, excuse me. When I, you know, head back home... I will show off, uh, you know, my complete collection of, of Van Halen CDs and stuff like that. And again, if this takes off, if people enjoy this, I will move into other bands. Um, so anyway, enough with that. I think that was a pretty solid intro, don't you agree? Um, let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? But Van Halen, again, has always been one of my favorite bands. Ever since I was a kid, um, my dad used to play... Uh, their music quite a bit growing up and the cool thing I think for me is you know I was born in 92 and that was kind of the tail end of the Sammy Hagar stuff Sammy Hagar um, at that point had done uh, three albums with Van Halen uh, 5150 OU812 and uh, For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge they would do one more album with Sammy Balance in 1995 before they called the quits. Um, so I kind of, you know, the pun is intended here because it's one of their songs. But I kind of got the best of both worlds because I my dad would play the Sammy stuff because he had all the Sammy albums. And then he had a couple of the David Lee Roth albums. So I would listen to those as well growing up. And then as I got older... I would branch more into David Lee Roth stuff. So, because my dad had the original album, Diver Down, in 1984. Um, and then later, as I, you know, grew up and, and got more into their music and stuff, I explored Van Halen 2, uh, Women and Children First, Fair Warning, you know, the, the kind of the middle albums there. And then, you know, of course, continued to listen to the other ones that we had. So there you go. So I was kind of fortunate because, again, being born in that era, you know, Sammy was in Van Halen, but my dad also introduced me to David Lee Roth. So I got to hear, 
hear both, you know, which was very nice. And I like both. Um, you know, I know there's people out there that are just, that like just David Lee Roth. I know there's people out there that like just Sammy Hagar. I know there's people that like both. Um, you know, and I like both. And why do I like both is because it's really two different bands if you think about it. Uh, the David Lee Roth era was, you know, hard rock, a little bit, you know, kind of birthing heavy metal a little bit. Um, it was just songs about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was about their going out there, partying, having a good time, trying to get laid. And, you know, they wrote a lot of great songs. Those first six albums, I still think, is their best work. The, I think the David Lee Roth stuff is, is Van Halen. And again, I love Sammy Hagar, don't get me wrong. But in my opinion, if someone were to say, like, you know, what is your kind of uh, uh, opinion of, of what Van Halen should be, I would say David Lee Roth, because that's what made Van Halen. Um, and here is a Van Halen poster, and then over there is a Van Halen poster. So there you go. Um, you know, and then, of course, they, you know, Eddie Van Halen revolutionized guitar playing. You know, he's always been one of my favorite guitar players, and ever since that first note of eruption hit, people were like, what the fuck is this? Where can I see this guy, and how can I learn how to do that? And I think even today, in 2018, I think people are still, uh, you know, trying to, like, decipher that and break that down, because again... In 1978, when the first album came out, there was no YouTube. There was barely uh, video bootleg. You know, there was just, you know, cassette tapes and vinyl bootlegs. Like, you had to go see Van Halen. You know, there was no MTV back then. There was no DVD trading back then. There was no, there wasn't even tape trading yet. You know, you had to go see a band to see what the hell that noise was on the album. You know, and again, I think even today... I, I still think 40 years later that some kid is going to hear that and be like, whoa, I want to do that. How can I do that? Let me go do that. I still think it can work in, in 2018. That's what I think a lot of uh, entertainers and musicians and, and all that don't realize today is like you can still do it the old school way and it can still be cool and it can still work. That's just me. Um but Van Halen ran hard from 78 to 84. You know, they started very humbly as just kind of a, a local band from Pasadena, California. They played, uh, you know, backyard beer parties and high school dances and, and you know, very humble beginnings. You know, they started out as a cover band. They used to play, you know, Kiss songs, Aerosmith songs, Deep Purple songs, uh, whatever they could do. And then as time went on, they would play you know, their own songs. And, you know, uh, Gene Simmons tried to get him a demo and that really didn't work out. And then Warner Brothers took an interest in Van Halen. And, you know, as they say, the rest is history. And again, as soon as that first album was released back in 1978, boom, they took off like the, the greatest bat out of hell that have ever really come out of rock music. And if you think about it, yeah, I mean... You know, bands like Aerosmith and Kiss and ACDC and Zeppelin and The Who and all these other great rock bands, you know, they had that rise to fame too. But I don't think that anybody was as big or has since been as big as Van Halen. Now, again, you know, people can say, well, you know, Motley Crue really hit it hard. They did, but... I don't think they hit it as quick as Van Halen. You know, that's just my opinion. You know, again, if I'm wrong on that, that's okay. It's just my thoughts on that. Um, you know, but they just came out of out of California, out of Pasadena, uh, you know, just like a train that would not stop. And then, you know, Van Halen 2 came out and was, you know, another big success. I don't think it was as big as the first album, but it was still a success enough to keep them going. And then... Women and Children first came out, and then Fair Warning came out and really reached into darker territory with that. And I still think Fair Warning is a great album that people kind of overlook. You know, there's a lot of really good songs on there, and they're dark, and they're down and dirty, and they really get you know their claws sunk in on those songs. And I think it's great. There's a lot of great songs on that album. 
you know, and then Diver Down came out and people were kind of like, okay, you know, because it was a cover album. And I think when it came out, people were kind of like, eh, but over the years, people have really come to enjoy it. And I lo I've always liked Diver Down. I thought it was kind of interesting to do mostly covers, but there is, uh, the original songs are on there like Hang Em High and I love Little Guitars. I think Little Guitars is a great song. Uh, the Fool Bug, you know, I think those are good. And then all the covers are good. Um, you know, I really like their cover of Pretty Woman and Dancing in the Street. Those were big hits for them, so there you go. And I think, again, that's where people kind of thought Van Halen was kind of like, all right, no, this isn't going to work anymore. And then 1984 came out and pff, blew up. Blew up. That was a huge album back in the day. And, you know, it was the first one to really feature Eddie on the keyboards and the synthesizers and... You know, that time period, like 83, when they did the U.S. Festival, 84, and then even 85, when David was still in the band, Van Halen was the biggest fucking band in the world. And people, I think, even, like, people that aren't huge fans of the band, I don't think they get that. I don't think they understand that Van Halen was that big from, like, 83 to 85. They were the biggest band in the world. No one can touch them. And that's like, was kind of the transition period because that's kind of like when old rock, like Kiss and, you know, Aerosmith and all that wasn't cool anymore. And Van Halen was kind of like that last band to really hold on to that and really still prove that, okay, you know, because at that time, like hair metal was coming in, you know, stuff like Motley Crue and, Def Leppard, and then a couple years later, you know, Poison, White Snake became hair metal. But Van Halen was still that one band that was still there, still putting out great music, and it was like, you can try to fuck with us, but you won't, because we're better than you, we know we're better than you, and we're going to go out there tonight, and we are going to fucking prove it. And that's what they did every night, you know, from the beginning until 85, you know, and then... Uh, David left the band in 85 and, and it was, it wasn't, you know, a specific thing. There was a lot of things going on at the time with not just David, but with Eddie and, and everything else. And, you know, it was kind of just like, that was the point where they couldn't do it anymore. And then Sammy Hagar enters the picture. And the thing is, Sammy Hagar was already a very well established rock star at the time. He was in Montrose, which they put out great songs like Rock Candy and uh, Bad Motor Scooter and, and some other ones that were good. And then he went into a solo career and he had, you know, I Can't Drive 55 and Your Love is Driving Me Crazy, you know, songs like that. And then all of a sudden, this guy's the lead singer of Van Halen. It's like, whoa, like, what's going on here? And again, I don't think even today, all these years later, you know, 32 years later, people still don't get how big that was. Like, Sammy Hagar becoming the lead singer of Van Halen, like, no one expected that. And, I, you know, again, people, I think, don't realize how big that was for music. And then what do they, people were like, this isn't going to work. What they do, they release four number one albums in a row. All four albums with Sammy Hagar, number one. And they said that Sammy Hagar wouldn't work. And they changed. Like, you know, uh, 5150 and OU812 is very keyboard, very synthesizer heavy. But they're still, like, great riffs. You know, again, best of both worlds. Like, there's still that classic Van Halen sound in there. But they changed with the times because they realized that the old Van Halen, you know, running with the devil and, you know, somebody get me a doctor and dance the night away. Like that wasn't going to work anymore because now it's the 80, it's the, the eighties are in full swing. It's all about, you know, new wave and, and, you know, all that, you know, keyboard synthesizers, you know, that was what was cool. And Van Halen was like, all right, cool. You know, we can do that too, but we can still be a rock band. And they did. And again, you know, all the Sammy, you know, the first two are more the electronic, 
stuff that you know the keyboards and the synthesizers but there's still again great songs on those albums that don't feature that again best of both worlds is a great rock song and sammy hagar is a completely different singer than david lee roth you know david lee roth is all like you know god damn it boy i ain't lying to you i'm only gonna tell you one time oh, ah! you know like screeching and screaming and carrying on and you know he's got that that deep voice and then sammy comes in and he's like you know why can't this be love you know it's like whoa like holy shit this works and you know a lot of those songs again were power ballads you know why can't this be love dreams um you know when it's love but there's a lot of big songs huge hits that those were those were huge songs back in the 80s you know and then there's again there's other songs on those albums that you know mine all mine is a great song oh i, I fucking love that song um you know good enough hello babe wow you know that's whoa like okay cool you know you still got that classic van halen sound but you know now it's you know with the keyboard you know feels so good is such a great song you know i love that one um cabo wabo is great finish what you started a great riff like you know um fit you know 5150 the title track you know you know there's just so much great music on there that people don't talk about anymore because it's sammy hagar like who gives a fuck you know, if you don't like Sammy, great. That's awesome. You know, run with that till you die. I don't care. But there's so much great music in there that nobody talks about. And then you get into the 90s and it's like, okay, that shit's not cool anymore. Now it's about grunge and grimy music and, you know, Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all this. And then Van Halen's like, okay, cool. We can do that too. And then you have For Unlawful Carnal, Carnal Knowledge, a.k.a. Fuck. And that album is, you know, a return to that classic Van Halen sound all the way through. You know, Pound Cake with the drill, you know. <laughs> you know, whoa, like, come on. You know, other songs um, on there. Uh, you know, Judgment Day was a great song. <laughs> Put it off bam, 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 until judgment day. Um, you know, uh, fucking, what else is on? You know, uh, spank line, that fucking bass line, that Michael Anthony bass line, you know, boom, bam, boom, bam, bam, boom, bam, boom, bam. You know, just Michael Anthony is my favorite bass player. He always will be. The guy is a fucking genius. You know, it's a shame what they did to him, and I'll get more into that when we get into the, the actual albums. Um, you know, uh, Run Around is a great song. Here we go, round, round, round. You know, Top of the World uh, is just a fucking, I love that song so much, you know. Bam, 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 bam. Just a great riff. Fucking right now, you know. Bam, bam. You know, just a fucking amazing song with a great message. And then Balance, I think Balance was, you know, to be honest, the best of the Sammy Hagar albums. And it's so raw on there and it's dark and it's like, whoa, like this fuck. Like I recently, you know, um, I think at Christmas, yeah, when I was home at Christmas, I put that on the turntable and I was just like, J just listen to this fucking out. I remember telling my brother, I'm like, just listen to this. This is Van Halen. I don't give a fuck what anyone says, you know. Um, don't tell me what love can do. Dun, 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 Um, you know, Seven Seal is a band. You know, that's a great riff. And just even like Can't Stop Loving You is a great ballad. And there's, you know, Balance, I think, is, is the best Sammy Hagar album, in my opinion. You know, and then... 96 they caught they did the the twister uh humans humans being for twister which i love that song you know that has a great riff as well and then you know they split and then it was 
kind of a weird period for a couple of years because Dave was kind of back in the band. They recorded a couple songs, which um, I like those songs. Uh, Me, Wise Magic, and Can't Get This Stuff No More. I will admit they do feel kind of incomplete. They kind of like rushed those songs, um, but I still enjoy them. And, you know, again, there was a lot of confusion because they no one knew what was going on. Like Dave was in the band, then Dave wasn't in the band. And then Dave was kind of going to come back, and then it never happened. And then they decided to go with Gary Sharon from Extreme. And I will admit, I like that album. Is it the best Van Halen album? No, but it's different, and that's why I like it. I do think there's some really good songs on there, like Without You. Like, that's good. And then I really like Fire in the Hole, which was in uh, Lethal Weapon 4. And there, unfortunately, the issue with that time period, um, you know, Michael was also kind of on his way out because they kind of screwed over Mike Anthony again. And, you know, there was a lot of political stuff going on between Eddie and the label. And, um, you know, I think. Gary Sharon was kind of a victim of that, and I think he was kind of thrown into a situation where um, no matter what kind of job the guy did, it was going to just not work, you know, in my opinion. Um, and obviously it didn't because they, they did some demos for a potential second album, and then that was it. And then, like, Van Halen was really quiet for a few years. And, um, you know, I remember in 2004 when they got back with Sammy... I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I remember um, trying to go see them on that tour, and I never did. But um, from what I heard, that was not a very good time period. I know Eddie was still struggling with uh, alcohol, and, and Sammy was not very happy. And there was just a lot of shit going on there um, that just didn't pan out well for anybody. And then, obviously... After that tour, nothing happened there. And then I remember when they announced David Lee Roth was coming back in 2007. And I was in high school at the time. And I remember that being a really big deal. And that was the highest grossing concert tour of that year. Which is amazing. You know, Van Halen in 2007 made more money than any other fucking band in the world. Pretty amazing. And I, again, I remember trying to go see them on that tour, and I never got the opportunity to, which is unfortunate. You know, and then they did the A Different Kind of Truth album, which I really like that album. I think there's some really good material on there. I don't give a fuck that a lot of it is out, like, old demos that they redid and outtakes and stuff like that. I like that idea, you know. I thought it, it made it kind of interesting. And... You know, um, I'm not, you know, the biggest supporter of Wolfgang being in the van in the band. I get why he's there because he's Eddie's kid and he can play bass. Um, you know, he does a good job, but you know, to me, and even David said it when they did the press conference for the 2007 tour. He's like, "This is not a reunion. This is a reformation." Because you know, Michael Anthony was such a huge part of Van Halen from just that thundering bass that he had. And his amazing background vocals. You cannot replace him. You can never replace Michael Anthony. And it's such a shame that they parted ways with him. And, and the way that they did it. And it's just like. It was it was, it was was stupid in my opinion. Should never, ha should have never have happened. But that's just my opinion. But I do really like that different kind of truth album. And they did a tour for that. And then that was good. And then 2015 they just did a summer tour. Because they put out the live album with Dave and I saw them on that tour and I thought they were great. It was one of the best nights of my life. It was one of the best times of my life and I got to see them and, and it was awesome. And it is very frustrating to be a Van Halen fan because we've literally heard nothing in three years. So like, you know, it's, it's, it's very frustrating because they don't do interviews. They don't do press or anything like that. Um. Dave has done some, like, private shows and stuff, which is cool. You know, it, obviously it helps pay the bills, and I'm sure he enjoys doing that. Um, you know, but it is what it is, man. And I just, you know, I'm a huge Van Halen fan. I always have been, and I will be until the day that I 
die. You know, I will always be a Van Halen fan. And, you know, I just really, honestly, I really like doing this video. I really like coming on here and talking about Van Halen. And I am really looking forward to doing these reviews of their albums and talk about maybe a couple of different other things involving Van Halen. Um, I don't know, but uh, we'll see. We will see what happens. Um, again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I, you know, hope that you like all the videos that I do. And um, let me know below what your thoughts are on Van Halen, if you enjoy their music. And um, I will uh, talk to you guys later. And the next video that I do will be a review of none other than the original album. And I will go through song by song and kind of share my thoughts, you know, history and stuff like that with it. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.